Great. So today, we're going to do an introduction to CVCRM. This will take around an hour, and there'll be time for questions as well. Um, okay. Uh, so my name is Oliver Gibson. I work for a company called Northbridge Digital. We provide um, CVCRM and Drupal-based services to organizations uh, across the UK and across Europe. Um, we've got about, I personally have um, seven years experience of working with CVCRM and I run a meetup here in the north of England and I've been involved in training programs and we write training courses as well. And we also deliver CVCRM services. So this, um, this webinar is for people who are brand new to CVCRM. They think it might be something that their organization might need. Um, they may be, you may be evaluating CVCRM. You may be looking at other systems. You may just want to do a bit of general fact finding. We're not going to go into a great deal of detail. We're going to talk about, I'll just move on. We're going to talk about what CVCRM is, how to get going. Uh, we're going to take a look at CVCRM as a basic system. And then we're going to look at uh, an example a component, it's, it's called a component, it's how, how you would take the system a bit further. So we're going to look at memberships. Okay, so we'll get started. I was going to do some introductions, but it doesn't sound like anyone's dialed in. So um, what I'll do is I will just carry on. Okay, so first of all, what is CVCRM? Well, CVCRM has been around since 2004 as a piece of software, and the original aim was to create a freely available CRM system for not-for-profit and volunteering community organizations. It's an online system. That means um, you, you, only, you can really only access it through the internet, but it would be possible to set it up on a local server as well. Um, it's open source. Now that means, um, well that's very, very important. It means that it's freely available to use. You can't sell it, but you could change it. And there are two main releases a year. I think every spring and every autumn or fall there's a new release. Now, there are minor releases the rest of the time, which uh, may, may be security updates or bring out, bring out new minor features, but there's a major release twice a year. And it generally isn't accessed as a standalone system. You access CBCRM through another content management system, which is a, a content management system is something like WordPress, Joomla, or Drupal. They are open source website content management systems that are used for millions of websites across the world. You, um, and CBCRM is, uh, is added as a, an extension or a module to one of those other content management systems. And because it's online, that means CBCRM can be integrated with an existing website or a new website. So all the things that if you had an offline system that would be difficult to do, you can do through CVCRM. So you can, it's relatively easy to register people, members of the public who are accessing your website. It's relatively easy to, for them to register for a newsletter or for them to register for an event, maybe donate some money online. Um, maybe fill in a form. And those, those interactions go straight into the CRM system. Um, CBCRM is based around contacts. So organizations, individuals, 
maybe households and the relationships between them. And it's extendable. The, base, this, the main system works uh, in, quite, in a quite structured way, but then it's very flexible. You can add, as projects come and go, new pieces of work start, you want to um, start maybe running training courses, or you know, your needs as an organization change, CBCRM can flex with you. And beyond the basic system, which we will look at later in this webinar, we also have a, a number of inbuilt components. These are uh, contribute, contribute events, events member, member mailings, mailings activities, activities and more. So how does CBCRM work? Well we have, well, we a, have community a community of users and users developers. And developers. Um, the developers are part of CBCRM core team and other um, people who uh, other programmers who work with the system, and then there's the administrators who work who run CBCRM with organizations, and then there's the actual users themselves. Okay, uh, I guess you could also say that CBCRM is a bit more than that community. It is also um, you also have conferences and local meetings. Well, so, for example, for example, in London this year, in September, we'll be having um, the European conference. And as I said earlier, I run a meetup here in the north of England. And all the conferences and meetups are listed on the CBCRM website in the event section, which is at the, towards the bottom of the front page. And then we also have an online presence. So you want support, you want help, a number of resources. It's got a message from Rachel saying I'm echoing. And I'm going to um, let's try and resolve that. I'll, 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 Hi, is that better? You are now muted. Hi, I think that might have resolved it. Something to, I'm using Skype to dial in. I think it may have caused some kind of issue there. Okay. Um, if can you? Um, thank you, Rachel. Okay, I can see that. <laughs> okay. I'm Saul, thank you. Okay, I'll carry on. Okay. Okay, um, as a basic introduction, has anyone got any questions at this point? Um, please uh, type them in through the question window if you have. I'll just wait uh, a few seconds before moving on. Okay, um, no questions so far. I don't, ah. Shannon Anderson has asked if she can use CBCRM as an offline data management system. CBCRM is an online only system, um, with the exception that you, you, if you had an, uh, say for example, a web server in your office, you could, you could set it up to run in your office, on, on your office system. 
but it's not something that you could use offline on a laptop when whilst you're on a train or at home, for example. Shannon, does that answer your question? Okay. Okay, I'll I'll move on to the next section. Okay, now we're going to talk about how you would get started with CBCR. So we're assuming that you're in a situation where you you are interested, and it's something that your organisation or you know a community group you're involved with wants to take it up. Well, how do we actually get going? Okay, well there's three uh, main options. If you're technically minded and you don't mind doing the work yourself, you can self-learn as you go along. You can, you can um, download CVCRM, you can uh, follow some instructions, you can install it online, um, you could attend a training course. This is something that you could do yourself if you have some of those skills. Or you don't mind putting, you know, putting some bit of thought into that. You could, alternatively, if you're an organisation who has uh, has some internal capacity, you could use an in-house technical person to set it up for you. Or if you already have a website which is Drupal, Joomla, or WordPress, you might ask your website developer to install CVCRM. To get so you can get going, so they could install it, but then you could do you could read the book and the other resources to start get, start getting it used. Um, third alternative is that you can use a provider. So a provider is someone who um, here we are. I'll just show you. So you should on your screen you should see. Um, this page, which page, which is cbcrm.org forward slash providers, and this is the Northbridge digital entry on there. This will list um, pro um, providers, both in term, uh, from uh, both location and the services they supply. Uh, or would they would they train your staff, for example? Would they be able to host the system for you? Would they be able to help you implement the system and look at your um, existing databases, spreadsheets, forms, um, data, would they help you migrate the information? Um, uh, a lot of those organizations will then have potentially have, they potentially have an ongoing relationship with you and, and support you in it support you with your CVCRM installation after it's gone into use. Okay. If we assume that you now have CBCRM, you may be doing it yourself, you might not have, might have helped you, you can then use book.cbcrm.org. That is a fantastic resource which, um, which goes through in very clear sections how the different bits of CBCRM are administrated, how they're used, how things should be set up. It's not a book you would actually read, it's a reference book that you would dip into. And the book is updated in line with the releases of CBCRM, so we update it regularly. We also have a number of other areas in where, you can, where you can get help once you're using the system. If you, if you are taking control yourself or you come across something you're not quite sure how to, how to make it work, you can use the CVCRM forum. The forum uh, has two purposes. It allows you to ask questions and receive answers, and there's different, sec there's different boards, so you call them forum boards, where you can post, quest post questions in the right place. And it's also a resource in itself, as in all the previous answers are available. Um, you can also find some information on wiki.cbcrm.org. That's got a bit more in-depth information and technical information than the book. So if you wanted to know, for example, how to update your version of CBCRM to the next version, 
that's where you would find it with detail that's where you would find those instructions and you can also use an internet relay chat IRC chat client uh, hash CRM where lots of the core team and different people are available to ask the, where you can ask them live questions okay Okay, has anyone got any questions around um, actually getting started with CBCRM? Okay, it doesn't appear so. Saul said he's still got no questions, so I will carry on. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is to look at CBCR in practice. Now, what I'll do is I've, I've got it broken down into different into different sections, and uh, after e if, after each section, I'll go back and check to see if anyone's asked any questions. So if you, if you want to ask a question, just type something in as we go along. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a CDCRM installation that just a test one that we've got uh, on the Northbridge Digital website. Okay, that should have loaded up for you now. Okay, so this is the CBCRM homepage. Um, we're not, this is only a test installation. This, this secondary menu, um, you wouldn't look at. But what, we're, what we're interested in is home, search, contacts, contributions, events. That's the CBCRM menu across the top. Uh, on a production site, this second, this that secondary menu underneath wouldn't that wouldn't be there. Okay, so this is the CBCRM starting page. We call it the dashboard. On here, we've already got some useful information. I've set it up so that we can see, for example, how many donations we've had this month. What are my scheduled activities? And you can change the dashboard using a drag and drop. So you can alter which reports you you want to see. So these are, these are these are system reports. We're not going to look at reporting because there isn't time in this webinar. But this is just so you can see that it's different people can choose what reports they might see when they log in. Okay, uh, so now I'm going to do some basic looking around. I'm going to do some searching. So this box up at the top left, this is called a quick look up. So I'm going to look for a person that I know is in there called Mike. This test system only has um, a very few number of people in it, but in reality, you may come up with a bit more, with a more, a longer list. There. So you see, it allows you to type in the first few characters of someone's name or email address, and you can get, you can, you could go straight to their record. I could also change it to be a different part to their title of their details. This isn't a search as such. It's more of a lookup because all it's doing is allowing us to get to a single contact. 
Okay, this is the contact summary screen. We'll come back to this in one minute. Uh, for now, I'm just going to do a couple more searches. Okay, so here we could also search for contacts. So what I've done is I've just searched for anybody. That's, these are all the seven people that are in the system. They're, they're not real people. But I could say I'm looking for everyone called Oliver. And I'll search for that. If you go back again, we can see that I could also see if they were in a certain group. So a group is a, it's a, it's a, it's a very clear concept. You, people go into the group. These are the people who subscribe to the newsletter. These are the people who are chief officers. This is our advisory board. In most cases, it's a, a value judgment. Someone has tipped that contact to be in that group. Or if you're using website integration, someone, if for example someone registers for a newsletter through the website, then they may go automatically add themselves or remove themselves from this group. This is also, this is a very simple type of searching. There's not very much you can do here. The next level up is to use the advanced search. Now in here, you can search pretty much every field in the database. So we could say, I'm looking for someone who's a student, who gets the newsletter, who is also a new general member. Oh, we have special features. Where you can say things like, I want to see everyone that lives within five miles of this postcode location. That's a, that's a UK postcode. I hope that makes sense in terms of searching. Um, I think what I'm, what I'm trying to show is that you, there's very simple searches and there's also very big, powerful, flexible searches that allow you to get into the whole database structure. If you do have any questions, please please post them up, uh, and I, I'm, I'm monitoring them at the same time. Okay, I'm now going to repeat the search, the basic search. And I'm just going to show the seven contacts that are in the system. Okay, I've, I've selected all seven, but I could have just ticked individual contacts. And you'll see that I now have access to a menu called Actions. Now, here, you'll see some things like I can delete contacts or I can delete permanently. Now, I'm logged in as the administrator, so I can delete people permanently. You might choose in your system to have only 
a few people have that permission. Most people can delete contacts, but contacts when they've been deleted actually go into a trash bin. Only the administrator will be able to delete people permanently. Um, we can also export contacts. So I could choose to export all the fields, all the main fields about a contact, or I could choose to select the fields. When you do the export, it actually creates uh, a CSV comma separated value file, which is a standard file that's uh, opened in Excel and any other um, standard sort of spreadsheet package. Um, I'll go back to the menu. We can also produce mailing labels. Now this, these are the features that make CBCRM practical. There are some things that excite the management team, and there are some things that excite the administrators. This is one of the things that would excite an administrator. They don't have to export and do a, ma a mail merge into Word. Here, you can choose the label, click mailing labels. That will then create a PDF using this, sta this standard label size. I can also map the contacts. Every time a contact is saved in CBCRM, if there's some address data, it will. If your mapping, if your mapping settings are set up correctly, it will go and collect some um, latitude and longitude data for that contact. Therefore, you can easily then show them on a map, and that's how we can also do things like show me everyone within six miles of a certain location. Uh, there's, a, there's, a message, there's a question here from Christine. Uh, I'll just read it out. We use subdomains on WordPress, except we have a chapter in Washington C that gets a set of pages. Oh, actually, I'll just read it. It's quite long. I'll, I'll just read it. <laughs> and I'll answer. Uh, Christine, I think I'm just reading quite quickly what you've said. It seems to me that you're saying that you, you want to use CBCRM across multiple, um, uh, multiple, across multiple websites. That is possible. Um, you use WordPress. Uh, that's not my area of expertise, but I think that's possible. Um, with that particular question, it's quite detailed and probably a little bit beyond the scope of this webinar, um, if, if you wanted to uh, email me afterwards, after the meeting, I'll be quite happy to answer that in a, a bit more detail, if that's okay. Okay, I'm just going to go back in to the presentation. Okay, so a maps, that's a really useful thing. Um, we have some administration tools. So if we could see, for example, that two, you could see that two people were duplicated, we can merge them. CBCRM also has its own merging um, tools. So if you add someone, it will attempt to identify if that's an existing contact. And that doesn't matter if it's someone, someone adding a 
contact via the back end or if, so, or if that's someone doing it themselves online. There's also Adam and administration administration tools for checking for duplicates as well. Um, we can print PDF letters. So I'll do that because it's provides you an interesting insight into what is possible. So I'm going to say we have a new letter. And so this will create a letter for each of those seven contacts, and it's going to personalize it. So I said hi, and I might at this point use something called a token. So a token will, will take part of that contacts record and put that into the letter. So hi, Oliver. There are lots of tokens available. They're all the standard information about contact. And if you add extra custom fields, they are also available as well. You might put your organization's logo into this. Um, and part of the reason why it's worth talking about is it's not this, this idea of tokens isn't just used by letters. It's also used in other parts of the system. So if we were going to send a mailing, so a mailing is a, a mass mailing. It's a, an email. It's, a, for example, a newsletter. It might go to 50 people or, or 5,000. You can also personalize that using exactly this same token interface. And and this is the same throughout the rest of the system. When you do put something together using a text editor like this with tokens, you can always save it as a template. So you can come back to it. So it might be that your first, your first newsletter or your first letter takes a while to put together, but then you can save the template and it's very easily reusable. OK, I'll go back at this point. Uh, there's lots of other actions, but they're the main ones. Uh, you can also do things like um, send a uh, text message and SMS message to people as well uh, if, if the system was configured for text messaging. messaging. OK. Um, has anyone got any questions about searching and the main actions? Uh, Rachel was asked, can you send an attachment with a mailing? And yes, you can. Um, but there are implications to that. So if you sent uh, a mailing to a few thousand people and you had, say, a two or three megabyte attachment, your server is going to have to send um, that attachment a few thousand times, which is obviously going to cause problems for the server, especially if you're on shared hosting. It might be better. That, what you, that you would actually upload the file to the website, and then you would send people a link to the file. OK, uh, has anyone got any more questions at this time? If not, I'll move on. To the next section. Okay, now we're going to look at an actual contact. And then we're going to create some contacts and we're going to create relationships between them. So this is the Oliver Gibson contact. You can see this is, this is straightforward information. I could edit this contact, or we also have the ability which will show all the edit features or all the edit editable fields, or we can edit little bits. So we have something called inline editing. So 
as you can see, that's allowing me to go in and just change on screen one little bit of information. We also have custom information here, which this these are these are closed, but they could be they could be set so they're, they're always open. So here you could record someone's marital status. That isn't an out of the box field. That is a custom field that's been added to this system. And so we've got a summary page, summary screen, but then across the top we have something called tabs. So we can see that Oliver has made one contribution. So a contribution in CIBI CRM terms is a payment. So, that, so I've made an online contribution for £100 on 14th of April, and that's completed. I'm also a member. So this is, um, and we'll talk, we'll talk more about membership after this, because it's an interesting use case. Uh, but I'm a general member, and I joined um, in February. I've been to, oh, well, no, I've registered for three events. Now, I could have registered online through the website myself, or in this case, a member of staff registered me with a payment as well. In one for the Rainforest Cup, there's an $800 payment. And we have 26 activities. Now, as you can see, this is just a mixture of, te of test information. Now, activities in CBCRM come in two different types. There are automated activities and manual activities added by staff. So an example of an automated activity is I registered for an event. The system will create the event registration, but it also create the activity separately. Or if I received a newsletter, a mass mailing, or if a PDF letter was printed for me, there are all activities that the system will record. A manual activity is more like this. So I'm going to add a meeting or a phone call. So this is where a member of staff is doing something. We have an interesting one here, mental health evaluation. This is where this system has been set up so that staff can record work they do with people. So what it is, I'll go to contact who isn't me, because I'm the logged in person, I'm Oliver, I'm the staff member. So I'm going to go to someone called Mike, and I'm going to say that, that Mike requires a mental health evaluation. This is me, Oliver Gibson. I'm the staff member. Mike Fitzsimmons, he's the person we're working with. Uh, we can optionally assign this so another, in turn, another staff member. We can record things like subject location, dates, duration. So if it's for the project, you might want to know how much time you spent on this. Is it scheduled or completed? And then in here, you could put some notes about what happened. Those up to up to that point, up to details, they're the standard fields about an activity. But down here, we can have more custom fields. So these are custom fields about this activity. So when we met, he had a confidence level of three. He's feeling pretty good. I could make an attachment. So if he, as part of the evaluation, if, if he or me or I have to complete the form, 
we want to scan it in, we could attach it. I can also schedule myself a follow-up. So I'm going to call him in two weeks' time to ask how he's getting on. So I'll save that now and we'll see what's happened. So if we go back to the Oliver Gibson record, we now don't have 26 activities, we have 28. This is the one I just added here. That's the phone call to check. So as I explained there, there's automatic activities and manual activities. And um, they're all fully searchable. So I can see how many I've added, how many how many on the people people we've worked with. Um, you could search for all activities where there where there has been a confidence level of three in a certain date range. Um, a lot of the time that is for, for organizations that is their reporting. Okay, we also have groups. So we talked about these before. I'm in the newsletter group. I'm also a user. I used to be on the advisory board. I could put myself into another group if I wanted to. Okay, that's at contact and what we'll do is we'll now create a relationship between this contact and another another contact. So we're going to create an employee employer relationship. So I'm going to say that I'm a, an employee of Northbridge. I could just save that at this point. If, for example, you wanted to know the start date and end date of relationships, for example, if you had a large number of volunteers and they had fixed, fixed dates, then that might be useful. So all I'm going to do is quick save that. So now we can see that Oliver is an employee of Northbridge. And if we look at Northbridge, which as you can see has a different symbol, it's, this is an organization. The organization has a relationship back to Oliver. It's also possible to have relationships with more than one type of other, with more than one contact. So I could be an employee of Northbridge. I could also be a volunteer for somebody else. I could have a relationship with my doctor. Um, there's, there's also, you know, any, anything is possible. Okay, I'm now going to add a new contact, a new individual. And we have here some subtypes. The reason we might use those is that you, say for example student, you wouldn't want to record for every individual which college they're attending. That is not appropriate. But it's certainly appropriate for students. So when you create the custom fields, you can say these custom fields, uh, this custom field on co about college is only attributed to this individual, to students. Uh, these, this is just samples. Uh, in, in reality, this would be, these, you would have your own list here if it was needed. So 
So, I, but for now, I'm just going to say new individual. So this page that comes up, this is the standard edit screen, and it looks very similar for an organization. And so I'm going to say it's a new person. But if I put in here Gibson, which is my surname, I get this little warning. Do you mean it's one of these existing people? So the system is trying to second guess you. It's trying to um, make sure that you're not put, entering people who already exist. So now I'm just going to say new person. Interesting here, we can have, I'll put some nonsense in, a phone number. This is a contact phone. And then we can add a sec, ah, it's, it's moving, because of the way I've got, it, I've got the screen. But, Basically, you can. That's how you you add. It's always an add another phone number, add another website, add another email link. So you can you can you could have two or three emails for someone, and you can say which one is the primary one. So I'll save that contact. So it's a new person. Okay. Has anyone got any questions at this point? As you can see from these menus, there are lots of things you can do. You can import contacts, you can manage the groups, um, there are lots of different searches. On, on a production system, you would probably hide some of these, or, or you might use permissions to make it impossible for someone to be able, for different staff members to be able to use some of these features. For example, you wouldn't want every member of staff to be able to import some contacts. Or you may decide that it's only um, certain individuals who can find and merge the duplicate contacts or access the administration side of the system. Okay, if there are no questions, I'll move on to membership. Membership's a really good example because it explains how a few bits of the system work. Because, um, well, that will become clear. So, why would we use membership? Why couldn't, for example, a member just be a group? Someone is, someone is a full member, and we're going to tick them into a group. Well, the reasons are why you would use membership, the membership module, um, is that if you wanted to take a payment with the membership, and if you, just, if you were just using groups, that wouldn't be possible. Um, you might also want a membership to go up to run over a specific time period. So every year on the 1st of January, a new membership period starts. Or is it a rolling membership? So you join on a certain day and exactly this, the same day next year, that's when your membership would end and you have to renew. Um, we can also do online registrations as well. Um, so it's probably I didn't check this before actually um, it's a member sign up and renewal this is contributions this is where you, this is where you actually create pages where people can do things through your website so in here we have a page so people can this is, a very, this is a very simple setup. In reality, you probably have more information than this. You would ask some questions, perhaps. But this would create 
membership. And we've also got an optional, would you like to buy a coffee mug at the same time? I'll go back. Um, the membership system has some fantastic features, um, such as if, for example, you're winning an annual, uh, an annual membership, the system can automatically send the member something called a scheduled reminder, and that could be if they could get one one month before, one week before, one day before their membership comes out, and that would contain a personalised link to to the a membership renewal form. When they click the link, it fills in the form with the information you already know about them, most likely mainly what they said in the previous year. So what it is, I'll just show you how to get going with the administration side. So this, the administration side, there's um, quite a lot to it, and it's all detailed in the book, but I'm going to dip into this. I'm going to add a new membership type. We'll add a member, and then we'll come back to this, da this membership dashboard to see it working. So I'm going to go to administration membership types. I'm going to add a new one. So we'll call this it's an affiliate, affiliated membership. Now member they are members of, of an organization, as in your organization. So in this case they would be members of Northbridge. They're going to charge. Well, actually, no, we'll be, we'll be generous. We won't charge. Do we want to auto renew? I'll say no. But this is something you can do. This is this requires some auto renew. Is where the system on where before their membership term runs out, the system will automatically recharge their payment method. It doesn't work for all payment, we call them payment processes. For example, it, you might have a connection to PayPal or WorldPay or Authorize.net. It doesn't work for all payment processes and it requires some setting up, but um, it's, it's a, a valuable addition. Um, how long will the membership last for? It's one year. I'll say it's rolling. So that means it's from today. And we can also pass this relationship onto other contacts. So we could say that everyone who's an employee or employer of the, the, of the member is also a member. So where that's may be useful, if you are using this as a membership system where you're providing member-only content, so people log into your website and the system will check to see if they're a member, the organization they work for is the main member, but they as employees will also be able to access the member content. Is this public? Is this something that we would want? We want to people to people to access online, or is it an administration only thing? And I'll save that. So that's now created a new affiliated member type. I'll go back to one of our existing contacts. Go to Katie. Katie isn't a member at the moment, so I'm going to add. A membership. Uh, so this is me manually doing this as a staff, as a member of staff. This might might be something that she would be doing herself through the website. So you're going to say it's Northbridge. It's an affiliated member. It's for one term, so one year. When did she start? We don't. When is it since? We don't need to add start date or end date because they will be automatically completed based on the member since date. We'll also record a payment. 
and we'll say she's given us 50 pounds she paid by cat by check at this point we could send her a confirmation and receipt to her email address that's not something we'll do so there's some other custom fields here but what we're going to do is we're just going to save this So now Katie has a membership. We've got a notification on screen to say that the membership's been added. We can see when it started. We can see it's for one year. She has a status of new. She'll go from new to current to grace to expired. Those names can be changed, but people will automatically go through those different membership statuses. Now if you go back to our member dashboard, We can see we have affiliated member. We have one person. And she also is listed at the top of our list as well. Okay, that's membership. Has anyone got any questions or any general questions about CBCRM? And this is just a quick uh, summary saying uh, what we've done today. So we've looked and talked about what CBCRM is. We explored how you would get started. We did. Uh, we looked at how you would use CBCRM as a basic staff member. And then we looked at one of the components, which was membership. Ah, so Christine has asked, do we, do we have any examples of what the user interface might look like? For example, a form might, people might fill out with their contact information. Um, yes, I'm just going to try and do this in a way where I make sure we don't, I don't show you anyone's information. Okay, so this is someone we work with. Um, I'm just going to go through to their membership form. So this is a membership form that allows you to, so I'm, I'm accessing this as a member of the public. I can add information about um, both an organization and an individual. Now as you, you'll see as I scroll down, this is quite a long form. There's drop downs, check boxes. There are fields that are mandatory. This isn't your average form. <laughs> this is a long form. There are, there are interesting things to note. For example, this is done on a Drupal system. And you can see here that it asks you to create a username. So this is going to create the contact, create the individual and the organization in CBCRM. It will create a relationship between them. And it could also create a Drupal user for them so they've got a login. And then we have some payment options and a capture form. Christine, did that? Is that the kind of thing you're looking for? That's, that's uh, an example of a, a complicated form. Not all forms would be that long. And also, this one hasn't necessarily received a lot of styling. It might be that, you would, that your form would have more uh, of a graphical element to it as well, graphic, graphical design. Okay, um, so before we finish, is there, is there any more questions?
Okay, it doesn't look like there are any. Um, um, if you do have any, any questions, please get in touch. Um, you, my email address is there on screen. Um, or you can ask questions on the CBCRM forums or the IRC chat. Um, I hope it's been useful for you. Um, and I'm sorry about the echo as you went through. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. It's been, uh, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> okay. I'm going to stop the recording now.